So Shpressa and Women's Therapy Centre knew that there were barriers to women accessing mental health services. Louis alluded to that. First of all, there's a lack of knowledge and a language about which to talk of mental health. If you come from communities where you don't discuss being depressed or being isolated, and there's also a lack of appropriate provision. And what this project was going to do was to try and overcome some of those barriers. Initially, um, when we did the funding bid, we put in some money for leaflets, but actually what became apparent <coughs> excuse me, very early on was the importance of word of mouth. When I did the first focus group, it was with 10 women, I said to them all, how did you go about the service? And every single one said, my friend told me about Shpressa. Nobody had read a leaflet, everyone had heard through word of mouth. And there was a very great importance about hearing about the service from other women from the community who you trusted. And trust was critical. When I did the first focus group, I said to women, why did you come? They were saying, well, Shpressa went with me to court. They've been here for everything I've needed. We come to Shpressa program because they help us with everything. It's peace to come here to Shpressa. It's part of our identity. Here we belong. And what one of the members of staff at the Women's Therapy Centre said very early on is, if someone has no food and nowhere to live, your attention should be on addressing that. You can't offer therapy to someone in that position. And Shpressa was listening to women's practice needs and that meant that women could trust that service. As Lulietta said, in the bid for this project there was funding built in to help women to get to travel to therapy. So as one woman said, they helped me with expenses to get there. At the time I was destitute, I had no income. They would accompany women. There was one woman I interviewed who had agoraphobia and epilepsy and she said I needed to access therapy but I couldn't have gone on my own. So she pressed her around for a volunteer to go with her each time. They would arrange childcare, car back, and also interpreters. One of the bigger and more intangible barriers is stigma. And women talked about that a lot in the focus groups. I thought only mad people go to therapy. I had the impression therapy dealt just with very mad people. But now, from the very first appointment, I realize it's for me. Some people think you have to keep things in private, but I have learned it is better in the open. So how Shpressa overcame those barriers, and how the Women's Therapy Centre overcame those barriers, I think this is critical, this quote from one of the focus groups. I trust Shpressa program, so I trust the therapy group. Women were using a trusted agency, so they would be prepared to do something that was risky to go to therapy because an agency they trusted and had a relationship with was working with the therapy agency. As one of the Women's Therapy Centre members of staff said, Shpressa has enabled us to reach women. I would say there is no way would have referred themselves and accessed our service. The issues arising, so initially there were information sessions. So a member of staff from the Memorial Service Centre would come and talk about mental health issues. And the issues that started arising very quickly were domestic violence. I'm not going to talk about that in depth because other people are covering that later with much more experience than me, but that came up regularly and consistently. The difficulties of raising children in a culture that you weren't yourself brought up in and cultural alienation and isolation. This is a typical quote, I'm very tired. I have no family here, I face everything alone. Sometimes when I think a lot, I can't even think who I am, where I am. I take medication because I am not calm. And that, that was the kind of sense that was repeated again and again. Um, and in terms of domestic violence, the, the murder that really talked about happened at the beginning of the program and there was very clearly an urgent need to address domestic violence. And the therapy groups, women said, provided a safe place, often for the very first time, to talk about domestic violence and to name it and to say what was going on. But also, out of the domestic violence issues, Women's Therapy Centre became aware of how much of a burden the staff at Shpressa were carrying. And one of the staff members at the Women's Therapy Centre said, I wish we had realised earlier what staff were holding and they thought more about support for staff and volunteers as well as the women within the community. So after the information groups, it became very apparent that women at Shpressa Program, Albania speaking women, were benefiting a lot from this service. So then Women's Therapy Centre came in and began to offer psychoeducation groups. These were over six weeks and they offered a safe place for women who said often for the very first time they talked about issues like violence, like isolation, like how depressed they felt. It gave them an opportunity to share with each other. And one of the women said, the therapist makes it safe, she puts boundaries so that I can talk about things I would never normally talk about. And whereas when I did the evaluation of the information sessions, women were saying it's great to talk, it's fantastic to have a language. The psychoeducation group evaluation showed that women were actually making changes. It was reducing their stress and increasing their capacity to cope with everyday life. 
So this is just a selection of quotes from women who've been in the psychoeducation group. Throughout the week, I'm a bit empty, and I look forward to the group, and it fills that emptiness. Another woman said, for eight years, I was very depressed. They have helped me very much. I feel more calm. Another woman, outside the world is very bad. I feel very good when I'm just about to go here to the group. And another woman, when we listen to each other, we have the courage to support each other. So clearly the group was making significant changes. And some women then went on from those psychoeducation groups into therapy. And if you read the literature, sometimes there's a question, can refugee women really make use of therapy? Is therapy suited to these women? I think the resounding results of this evaluation were, and these are again just a small number of quotes, therapy, okay, that is the best thing in my life, to be honest. It is amazing. That was a woman who was seeing the answer. Another woman saying that, it eases my suffering. It's like starting the hard work with someone else. Even my own mother does not know what I have shared with the therapist. And then another woman, who when I did the initial information group, said to me, oh, I've never used therapy. No, 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 said to me, yeah, I'm in therapy now. I'm very surprised with myself. It's a very big change, but it's good. I'm just going to use one case study. I've anonymized it significantly so that you won't recognize the woman. But just to give a flavor of the work that was going on. There was one woman, I've called her Flora, who was 27 years old and she had a two-year-old daughter. She had an extremely violent partner and her asylum application was refused. She was destitute when she came to Shrasa program. She described herself as desperate. She was extremely underweight, self-harming, and seeing the impact of the violence on her daughter was something she felt she couldn't cope with, she couldn't contain. So Shrasa and the link worker at the Women's Therapy Centre secured her food from a charity instantly so she could eat, and basic support from charity so she could clothe herself and her child. She presses the board in accessing a solicitor and went with her to the solicitor so she could reopen her um, asylum application. They referred her to social services and supported her through claiming under Section 17 of the Children's Act so that she could have an income ongoing, and that was a big battle that Shpressa supported her through. Shpressa found her accommodation. Her daughter began to use Shpressa services and she said just the relief of seeing her daughter doing ordinary things like playing with other children and talking to other adults without fear was huge. And then Nyonsa, an Albanian speaking therapist from the Women's Therapy Centre, began to provide mother tongue therapy. And this woman's life was really transformed. I, mean, I met her twice and there was a real sense of transformation um, from the therapy. As the evaluator, I was left with a sense this was a very brave project. Brave for funders, because I don't think funders are looking for projects to invest in. I think enough come to them. I don't think they have to invest in a project which wasn't promising quick outcomes. It wasn't saying we know the answers. It wasn't promising to turn around and see 30 women in therapy in one year. It was saying, we will start with information sessions, then we'll do psychoeducation groups, and then we hope a small number of women will come to therapy. It wasn't promising quick fixes, but funders chose to invest. For Women's Therapy Centre and Shpressa, these are two culturally very different organisations. And they, they came together and worked hard and invested in that partnership to ensure this project worked for women. And for women, as I've discussed, who came and used the service, they were overcoming huge barriers and a great deal of stigma. A brave project for the Women's Therapy Centre. This is one of the therapists. When I went to my first information session, I was not sure what to do. Women interrupting me and each other to offer milk and sugar, children crying in the corner, people walking in and out of the room. Soon I realised these were not my tidy sessions in a quiet consulting room. I had to develop a different approach. In fact, a different mindset. Now when I go in, I become part of the setting. I might even enjoy a piece of cake. A brave project for Shpressa. This was an interview with a staff member at the very outset of the project. This is a new project for us. We are out of our comfort zone. We are trusting other people. We are doing something very hard we normally would not do. And a brave project mostly for the women, but with really dramatic results. Flora, the woman who abused as a case study, said to me, I did not know I would have a second chance. I thought my life was over. But she described her work with me as giving her a new life, a second chance. So from the evaluation, we did a series of, uh, of uh, recommendations. So for Shpressa Program and the Women's Therapy Centre, the recommendation is continue to develop and evaluate this unique partnership. Highlight the impact on the lives of women. I think both these agencies are so used to having transformational impacts on women, they don't shout about it enough. As the evaluator, I was amazed at the impact the service was having. Also, in the current climate, I think it's important to look at the cost savings. I wish we didn't have to, but we do. And there are significant cost savings to the public health of investing in women. These are women who would be visiting their GP weekly, women who would be on high levels of antidepressants. 
women who have all their potential, and we know from Shressa, Albanian women's potential to transform their local community. I don't know how many of you have been into schools where um, Shpressa has trained staff who are now teaching assistants, children who are running youth groups, who are, you know, really, really models for future society. But all that potential is locked in women if they do not get this appropriate support. So some kind of looking at the savings of investing in the service and identify ways in which this model could be shared because I think it's a really important model. For other providers working with women refugees and asylum seekers, what we've learned from this project is it important to offer travel and childcare costs. Those are very real barriers to services. It's important to offer practical support alongside therapy. If somebody is hungry and in fear of violence, if somebody doesn't, can't speak the language, there's no point in offering them a lovely therapeutic environment with an English-speaking therapist in a quiet counselling room. Challenging stigma is ongoing and a really important part. Providing information, it was extraordinary how many women said, I never used the term mental health, I didn't have a language. That first information session enabled me to talk about what had been going on in my head. Ensure those delivering services aware of the experience, are aware of the experiences and the needs of refugee women. Women's Therapy Centre has a long track record of recognising the impact of exile and of loss on women's lives, and therefore we're able to work with women in a way that enables them to talk about those issues. Providing a space where women can talk about feelings without being judged and attacked is really critical. And developing, like I said, I won't focus on this, but developing culturally sensitive support around domestic violence is crucial. And using interpreters and mother son therapists opens up access. Recommendations for funders and commissioners. Funders and commissioners need to com commission mental health services for women refugees and asylum seekers to be delivered with community projects that those women already trust. That is the access route that, that, that ensures that women can access therapeutic services. The staff and volunteers within those refugee community groups need to be supported and funding needs to be built in to support staff and volunteers. That robust partnerships are critical if safe and sustainable services are be to, to be developed. A partnership, it takes time. It can't be built up overnight. You need to invest in those. And finally, like I said, support for women refugees and asylum seekers can make savings to the public purse, and maybe there's a need to fund some kind of um, exploration and, and developing the evidence for that. So that's the findings. And I just want to say that it was a privilege to evaluate this project, but it wouldn't have been possible without all the staff from Strasser Program and from the Women's Service Centre being incredibly open about working on this project, particularly the women who were in therapy and who went to the information sessions and psychoeducation education groups. They were hugely brave about discussing very difficult issues, so I want to thank them for making the evaluation such a pleasure to do, but also come up with such valuable findings.